When making rocket parts, it's pretty important that the tubes you make are square, or else it'll throw off all your other dimensions down the line. To that end, I'd like to show you a method to square metal tubes that's both easy and affordable to home machinists. Considering what we're starting with, with this bandsaw cut, I think what I got is much better. I'll start with rough cut on the bandsaw. It doesn't have to be very accurate just yet. I chuck it onto my rotary dividing head, placing it just past the OD jaws. It's not going to be perfectly ground, perfectly accurate, but it does force squaring off the edges here. I can then proceed to level the part using indicators, and I have to be very careful to get it right this way because all my squareness depends on this step. As you can see, none of the jaws are in the way of the cutting tool, so you have a clear path all the way around for a clean, square cut. You'll have to take care not to go too heavy with the cutting or else you might risk nudging it out of place after all this tedious alignment. The advantages of doing a lathe operation on a milling machine is that you can choose the pace at which you do your cutting. Because the tube itself is not spinning at high speed, there's not as much chatter and you can generally support it without anything like a steady rest or similar tool. Crucial to this operation, however, is the fact that we have access to the area behind the jaws to make this cut. And of course when you're done, now you have your reference point for when you need to drill holes. Because I did this on a dividing head, I was able to go straight into drilling the holes in a neat eight hole pattern right away. For those of you interested in designing rockets, it may be worth it to know the limits and capabilities of your machines. This dividing head has holes for 15 degrees that lock in place, so you usually want to make your hole pattern some factor of that, like 8 or 12. Try not to drill into your lathe jaws though, so just stop before you get to them. Once you have your hole started, you can always go back with a regular drill. When you're done, you can then traverse to the other side for the other set of holes. And it'll all be lined up perfectly. This depends on how long the part you're making is though, so if it's too long, then you'll have to take it off and flip it over anyway. I still think that's a fair compromise though for how easy this is. doesn't hurt to help support your part, but with how flexible this thin wall tube is, I don't know how much I really did. Though it's better than putting your hand on the side closer to the drill bit, because that's how you will hurt yourself. While I'm here, I might as well square this edge too but anything longer than this 7.5 inch tube and you'll get way too much chatter. And indeed, for the other 12.5 inch tube I was making, I had to remove it and rechuck it, as well as re-indicate it again. Nice and square. Since this is a clamshell part, I'm just going to go ahead and mill a slot all the way across with this eighth inch end mill. I make sure to leave just a bit so that the two parts are actually connected, but I can cut them off with a hacksaw and file it down. And there we have it, nice and square. You can make this on something as simple as a mini mill, as long as you have the right tools and fixturing. I like how it came out, ready for flight.